Hello, my name is Steve Jordans. Uh, I'm a professor from the University of Toronto, uh, and I'm also a co-founder of Cognito, Cognito being the company uh, behind Peer Scholar, the educational tool. Uh, this is the first video in our course uh, for our faculty support partners, that would be you, uh, or at least we're assuming it's you. We're, we're assuming that um, if you're watching this video, you are likely uh, a faculty support person at your uh, institution. Uh, but of course, if you're not, you're free to take the, the course as well. We will be speaking to people though, as though that is their role. Okay, so this first video is just a welcome and overview. Let's just get at it. Okay, so first of all, I want to introduce you to us. Who are we? Cognito. Um, well, there you see our, our sort of faces and names. Uh, what I really want to emphasize are the things on the bottom here. So first and foremost, we are educators. Um, we come from within the university context. I myself uh, have been teaching since 1995. Uh, and in fact, uh, the innovation you're about to see has, has really come about because I wanted to do certain things in my very large class that at that time seemed impossible. Uh, and so the whole impetus behind, you know, creating uh, Peer Scholar, the technology you're going to hear about, was to enhance the education for my students. Uh, and so now it's just a really kick to be able to, to bring that to the world more generally. Um, I also want to emphasize we're also educational researchers. Uh, we have uh, the Advanced Learning Technologies Lab at University of Toronto, uh, and really we all come out of that lab. So um, this is a lab that really focuses on evidence-based practices, you know, what is working uh, in the educational world. And of course, we're also the ed tech entrepreneurs because we've taken those ideas of what works and we've built them into technologies and then we've done research on those technologies. So, you know, to some extent, I think we're unlike some of the other vendors uh, that you might interact with in a university context in the sense that we really do come from an educational perspective and it's really driven by that. Everything else we do is really driven by our desire to have a, a maximal positive educational impact on students, generally defined. Uh, and so that's who we, are, who we are and that's where our motivation comes from. Okay, what about Peer Scholar? Well, so Peer Scholar is, is um, a peer review and peer assessment platform, but it also incorporates self-assessments and the formative use of feedback. So these are three different, very powerful educational processes. And what we've done is really structure a, a, a process students go through that includes all these elements, but it's structured in a way that is um, what well, was designed and has been shown to really enhance their ability to um, think critically, communicate, etc. Uh, so some of the things that Peer Scholar can do, and you'll learn more about these as we go, but one of the things it can do is support writing assignments in any class context. Um, some people think you know certain classes are too large to have writing in it. Uh, well, that's just not true, uh, at least not with Peer Scholar in the picture. Uh, and, and writing is a very powerful way to develop uh, the minds of students. It also allows you, by the way, to go beyond writing uh, and, to, and to ask students to submit any kind of digital composition, videos, images, audio files. Uh, this is important because students sometimes really enjoy uh, going outside of the written word and, and doing something that they, their creativity is sometimes leveraged a little bit more and their engagement is higher. Uh, and so it can allow uh, instructors to create activities for the students that the students really enjoy and, and find really powerful in terms of learning. So that's one of the other things it can do. Also, by the way, every Peer Scholar activity uh, involves students giving feedback to their peers and then learning from the feedback they receive. Uh, and so this notion of, of um, you know, giving and learning from feedback, which is a critical life skill in general, is part of every Peer Scholar activity. Yeah, and really, as I've kind of alluded to already, the real power of Peer Scholar is that the way it's structured, um, it, it's specifically structured in a way that really gives students what I call repeated structured practice in a feedback rich environment. Uh, and that's what you need to develop skills. And the skills that I have in mind are things like critical thought, creative thought, communication, both giving and receiving, the ability to collaborate with others, and metacognition, your sense of what you know and what you don't know, what you're good at, what you're not good at. So that sort of self-reflective analysis. 
um, which is really important to, to learning and growth in general. And so we've really set things up so students are engaging these skills, but they're doing it in a very repeated, structured way um, that our research has shown really develops these skills and strengthens them. Uh, these are the skills that will determine your student success in the future. And so, you know, developing them is, is, is of high importance. Uh, and, well, that's the whole goal of what we... Okay. What about you? What about you? There you are. Well, you know, first of all, we, we just want to highlight the really important role that, that you play at your university. Uh, as someone who helps faculty, uh, as they help students, notice students should have a T in that first one. Where did the T go? Anyway, um, you, you really do play a very, very important role. Um, for, for example, when we think of it in terms of peer scholar, here are some of the things that we see you doing uh, that's of, of really important relevance. So if a faculty member comes to you and let's say they say something like, we would like to enhance our students' critical thinking. I just wish there was a way to do that. Um, well, you know, you are the kind of person that can connect a desire or, or um, yeah, let's call it that, a desire by a faculty member, a, a teaching wish, if you will, with the technology that might allow them to do that in an innovative way. Um, and so, you know, in situations where peer scholar is the answer, we would like you to kind of know that and, 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 and be able to suggest it. Also, of course, anytime somebody does want to use some technology, you're the one that kind of helps them get going and, and makes them feel comfortable being a little innovative. Uh, and that is so critical uh, to the adoption of educational technologies and, and to maximize the impact they can have on learning. Uh, and that all goes through you and we realize that. Um, and we also realize, by the way, that you play a critical role or at least can play a critical role in terms of being a bridge between somebody like us, you know, a third party vendor, as they say, uh, and the faculty and your students. Uh, we really see our, ourselves as being in partnership with your institution. And, and we really want, you know, together, we're trying to maximize the success of the students at your institution. And you form that bridge um, that allows it to be a two-way street, literally, that allows us to kind of, you know, help through you, but also you to help us be a better partner by giving us a sense of, of things that your faculty might want, uh, maybe challenges they're having, you know, things that we could do to make uh, the product a better fit for your institution. And in fact, really, these three things are reflected in the primary learning objectives of the course that you're going to take. Here's what we want to do. By the time you're done the course, here's what here's what well here's what the course is for. First of all, to provide you with expertise on the learning challenges that Peer Scholar can address and the way it does so. You know, we want you to have a sense of all of the ways Peer Scholar can support learning uh, and development in your students, but we also want to give you a sense of how it's working. Uh, and so that if a faculty member asks you, you know, you don't it won't just be oh maybe you want to try Peer Scholar, but here's why. Um, here's how it works. So that's one of the goals, the sort of theoretical knowledge. We also want to give you, of course, the technical knowledge, the expertise on how to set up an activity, how to support it, um, and some of the best practices that a faculty member might want to consider uh, as they use Peer Scholar. And, if, and that third thing, of course, is what I was highlighting a moment ago, that two-way connection um, that allows us to keep you informed about new functionality and such and you to be our ear to the ground in terms of how we can support your institution better. Um, so that's a critical role for all of this for us to basically getting to know you, getting to form a relationship with you and, and vice versa. Okay. The course itself is going to work in the following way. We're going to have four chapters, four subsections. With each subsection we're going to ask you to first watch some videos and then do an assessment uh, that essentially shows us you watch the videos. Uh, and then at the end of every section, there will be a virtual meeting uh, where we can all chat about what you've learned, um, discuss any issues you might have, um, maybe talk about some specific use cases that, that make what you've learned come to life, uh, etc. Okay, just so a good chance, again, to get to know each other uh, and, and to chat through what you've learned. Uh, so we'll do that for chapter one, and then we'll do it again for two, again for three, and again for four. And specifically, I won't go into a lot of details here because you'll get it when we go through. Uh, but chapter one is really going to focus on what we call the classic approach, which is uh, really when individual students submit work and then assess other individual students. 
so the, the standard peer assessment kind of process. Uh, so I'm going to talk about why somebody might want to do that. Uh, why would you use Peer Scholar to do that? We'll then go through what it is, what the experience is like from a student's perspective when they go through an activity. And then finally, we'll talk about the instructor side of things. How do you set up the activity? Uh, what's the process? Uh, and what are some things you should know and think about as you do? Okay, chapter two is going to be uh, more pedagogical. It's going to focus on, okay, somebody wants to use uh, a classic activity. How, how can they really ramp things up? If they really want to maximize the learning, what are some things they can do? So, so here we're going to tell you about some notions like the use of rubrics uh, in the context of Peer Scholar and the ways that we can support both the giving and the learning from feedback. Okay, so it's just ramping things up a little bit in chapter two. Chapter three, we're going to focus more on managing an ongoing activity um, or, in fact, once it's done. So what are some of the things you can do in terms of yeah, managing an activity, watching things as it's unfolding, um, potentially getting involved in the process as it's unfolding if, if a faculty member wishes to. So what are the abilities of, uh, in that regard? What about grading? How do you set it up? How do you do it? Uh, releasing the grades, etc., all that kind of thing we'll talk about. Um, and uh, finally, we're going to talk about things like outputting reports and the activity level, activity library, which is uh, a library that allows users to save and share activities that they've created. So we'll hit some of that in chapter three. Uh, and then finally, in chapter four, we're going to go beyond the classic activity. Most people will use the classic activity, but there's other ways Peer Scholar can be used. We have a case study module, which kind of as implied is, is very popular in business context. We have a group work module um, that's really good for setting up group work that students don't hate. Trust me, <laughs> they will like this one better. Um, and then finally, at the end, we're going to bring everything together. We'll, we'll talk about a few technical issues, perhaps not issues, but technical characteristics, um, you know, using Peer Scholar as a standalone activity versus using it as an integrated uh, LMS activity, etc. cetera. Um, and, so, and some things like that, maybe a little bit of our roadmap, a little bit of what's coming next. Uh, but mostly we just want to bring everything together here uh, and, and that's the course. And so if you do this course formally, if you register for the course, go through these uh, videos, go through all the assessments, um, then by the end of that, we will send you a certificate. Uh, you will be a certified Peer Scholar Support Partner, uh, which we really appreciate. Uh, and that certificate, to some extent, will be your ticket to continued interactions with us uh, going forward. So uh, it's also something you can share on LinkedIn. Uh, if it helps with your professional development, fantastic. That would be great. All right. So with all that said, let's rock. <laughs> All right, see you uh, on the next video. Bye-bye.